This chicken and leek stew is absolutely delicious. Perfectly cooked chicken, silky smooth mash, all cooked down into the most amazing stew. Let's get straight into it. Now I'm using four shallots for this. I know people call them shallots, but it's up to you how you want to pronounce it. And these can be substituted with brown or yellow onions, and I recommend using two if that's the case. Depending on which you choose, the preparation's the same. Slice off both ends, cut them in half, peel off the skin, slice those halves into quarters, and then just roughly chop. Next is 400 grams of Swiss brown mushrooms, which are also known as baby portobellas. And depending on size, just slice them in half or into quarters. The bigger, the better for this type of recipe. Talking about big, these leeks are quite big and we're going to need two of them. And I'm just gonna slice off the root end and obviously that green stem. Don't take off too much of the actual flesh though. And this can just be sliced in half to make it easier to work with. Then slice each half into quarters and roughly chop pretty much the same size as the mushrooms. Also, I highly recommend after you've chopped it, just rinse it under some cold water just to rinse off any dirt. It's a lot easier to do it once it's been chopped. The chicken for this recipe is 1.2 kilos of thigh meat. It's got the bone in and skin on. You can use boneless and skinless if you want to. And all we have to do with this is salt the skin, which is going to draw moisture and add extra flavor to our dish. With the prep done, place a large high rimmed pan or pot over a high heat. Add in two tablespoons or 40 milliliters of olive oil. That's not extra virgin olive oil, by the way. And then place in the chicken skin side down and sear for five minutes in batches. I'm only going to do three at a time here and I'm going to do the other three after. This is just going to allow it to not overcrowd and then the chicken will steam and we won't get that beautiful color and the crispy chicken skin like this. Once that is achieved though, just place these into a bowl or plate and we're going to allow these to rest whilst we do the other ones. With both batches of chicken now out the way and resting, we can add in the shallots, as well as those quartered or halved mushrooms, depending on which you chose to do, as well as a nice pinch of sea salt flakes. Then get in there and saute this for about five minutes, mixing it around regularly, just for those mushrooms to start taking on a nice brown color, as well as the onions becoming translucent. And the mushrooms are going to start releasing quite a bit of moisture, which is going to pull up any of those stuck flavors that were left behind from the chicken. We're then going to deglaze the pan with 180 milliliters of verju, or white wine, or chicken stock if you can't consume alcohol. But verju is unfermented grape juice, it's non-alcoholic, but it can be hard to get or a little bit pricey. Anyway, with that in, we're going to allow this to come to a boil, and then we're going to reduce this down for one minute. And this is going to thicken up the sauce really nicely, but bring out so much depth of flavor and mix really well with those mushrooms. Add in 40 grams, which is two tablespoons of whole grain mustard for a nice pungent aromatic flavor, as well as like a sort of crackly texture. And then all we have to do is mix this through just until it's completely broken up. As for the rest of the ingredients, we can add in the wash leek. We didn't add this before because we don't want it to break down too much. Then we're going to add in 15 grams of fresh tarragon leaves for an amazing aromatic flavor, 600 milliliters of chicken stock for the base of our sauce and to increase depth. Then just mix that all together just until everything is completely combined and all of those flavors can become friends. After that's done, add the chicken back in along with any resting juices, making sure to push it down so it's completely submerged in that liquid. Then we're going to crack over some black pepper. 30 cracks worth. Mix that all through, again making sure everything's covered up. Then we're going to bring this to a boil, place on a lid, and I'm going to move this to a back burner out of the way for the time being, place it onto a low heat, and we're going to let this stew away for an hour and 15 minutes. All right, now what I'm about to do is completely optional. You really don't have to do this. I'm going to add one tablespoon of olive oil to a pan over a medium high heat and add in 15 grams of tarragon leaves. No stems, just the leaves only, along with a nice pinch of sea salt flakes. Spread them out and then we're just going to fry these off for about a minute to a minute and a half just until they're crispy. Then we're going to use a slotted spoon to scoop these out and place them onto a plate lined with some kitchen cloth to drain. You can also save the oil and use it in other recipes, but this is completely optional, like I said. If you saw my other stew recipe, which I did about two weeks ago, we made mashed potato. It was a little bit of a more fancier mash, but this one right here is going to be a nice simple one. We're going to peel one kilo or 2.2 pounds of any high starch potatoes. You can also save the peels as well. I've got a video on that to turn these into nice little crispy chips if you're interested. But once these are peeled, we can then add them to a pot, take them over to a sink, and then we're going to fill this up about one inch above the potatoes with cold water. Some people do cut them, some people leave them whole. I prefer it better with them whole. I feel like it gets more flavor out of them. Anyway, let's place these onto a high heat, season with salt, bring them to a boil, and then cook for about 22 to 25 minutes, just until they're soft and you can pierce them with a fork. Then drain them through the sieve and just allow them to cool for about 10 minutes. Once the potatoes are cool enough to handle, let's mash these up. I'm using a potato ricer, which is this gadget I have here, but you can use a moolie, a handheld masher, or even a fork, it's up to you, just as long as they're mashed and broken down, which I'll show you another step to get them even smoother later on. 
Once that's done, add in 80 grams of unsalted butter. This is gonna melt through to hot potatoes, as well as 180 milliliters of warmed milk. You can heat it in a saucepan or even in the microwave. Sea salt flakes to taste. And I'm not using cracked black pepper in this just because I don't want lumps through it. I'm just gonna season to taste with some ground white pepper. With that all in, all we have to do now is just mix this together just so those flavors can become friends and obviously that butter can melt just until you have this silky smooth mash here. But we're going to get it even smoother, which is completely optional. And I highly recommend putting it through a sieve, like a really fine sieve, and then just pressing it through into a bowl below. This does take a little bit of time, but the mash result is absolutely incredible and there is literally not a single lump at all, leaving us with this beautiful silky smooth mash. Going back to the stew that's been doing its thing for an hour and 15 minutes, we can remove the lid and what you should have is this beautiful looking sauce, which I'm just going to try and taste for seasoning and adjust if necessary. But once all that's done, this can be removed from the heat. Now, of course, you can serve this how you like, but I like to place down the mash first. This is going to be a great resting place for that chicken to come along. And I recommend one to two chicken thighs per recipe. It does serve about two to three people. Place over that mushroom, shallot, and leek mix. This tastes absolutely fantastic, by the way. I can't wait for you to try it. And of course, top it with that amazing rich sauce, which I reckon is one of the best parts about this recipe. And that mash literally just absorbs it, creating the most incredible flavor. Last but not least, top with the crispy tarragon leaves for a bit of color, texture, and flavor if you made them. But with all of that done, we're then left with this beautiful chicken and leek stew, which has the most incredible flavor, aroma, and even color. And the last thing to do is we can then dig in. Honestly, the flavor in that is probably one of the best dishes I've cooked on this channel so far. The meat literally melts in your mouth and that mash is so silky smooth. Both of them partner so well together and you've obviously got that little crisp from the tarragon crisps that we made. Obviously, they are optional, but I really highly recommend them. And obviously putting the fresh in the stew as well when it cooks down releases absolutely incredible flavor and i can't wait for you to try this dish thanks for watching